Hasn't, uh, oh, that, that. the 17th of September, 2020. This is uh, Wiki Speed Stand Up. Uh, go ahead, Lauren. And yes, it does, it does kind of shock you when that says, I'm recording. <laughs> okay, so Lauren Salter, Gabriel Island, British Columbia, Canada. And um, this week, I. Um, I looked at the uh, files, the uh, charitable status reporting files I recovered from the uh, uh, laptop hard drive. And I'm going to share my desktop. Uh, maybe I won't do it right now, but uh, in, in crosstalk, I'll show you what. But I was just about to update the password on SourceForge. And we've got GitHub now, right? But I don't, I, I, my cheat sheet doesn't work for GitHub. So anyway, I was just about to um, do some kind of backup, commit it somewhere where everyone could see it. Uh, and uh, so that's, uh, I, I just did that in the last few minutes, but I, I did uh, do the work to, to get, get it off the laptop and I've, I've got it now and I'm about to, start committing to a, a reasonable place. And we'll talk and cross talk about that. And um, there may be other things, um, but I can't think of them right now. And, oh yeah, I was on a, a really interesting Linux meeting that I'm gonna talk about. Uh, the, the, the Linux uh, user group to end, end all other user, user groups uh, did an online one, the one that I got me started. And I I consider that uh, relevant to a project like this. And um, coming week, I have high hopes now of um, doing something with the charitable reporting and touching base, maybe phone the IRS and find out where we're at, if they're about to suspend us or anything. And uh, so anyway, that uh, that's the coming week. Uh, and... Uh, Maybe if I have time, uh, do something with Raspberry Pi. I did revive my, or rather update my Raspberry Pi. It took about an hour. Sometime in the last couple of weeks. And uh, blocks are the smoke out here. Uh, and uh, that, uh, so my smoke report is, uh, was really bad on the, over the weekend. It's somewhat better today. Environment Canada says it will uh, re start to start to disappear or drop on the weekend, and people are very thankful for that. Uh, so that's the my block and the smoke report for Gabriel Island, and that's it for me. Okay, it's uh, Michael Wolchuk in Saskatoon, Canada. Uh, last week I got the recording posted, which um, a little bit more. Uh, a little bit faster than I've been doing. Um, I powered up my three new Raspberry Pi 3B pluses. Um, and I used the new Raspberry Pi power supply that I ordered, but it was really weird. Um, I powered the first one up with the micro SD that I thought was the Sun Founder kit. And it booted up in the noobs, which is the, which operating system do you want to want to install? So that was obviously not that, the correct micro SD, but uh, a backup that I had done of, the, of my dupes download. I found the micro SD that I had installed in the Sun Founder and plugged that into the ras new Raspberry Pi and no output, nothing. Just the red, red LED on the power supply, no flicker on the green, no output to the video. Uh, so I plugged the Pi into a different TV, still nothing. I used a different power supply, still nothing. I went back to the, the first micro SD card, the noobs, and it booted into the install menu. So I repeated that process with all of the new, uh, the three new Raspberry Pis, and they all work, which is good. And I tried all of the Sun, them all with the Sun Founder micro SD, and none of them worked. So I loaded up the old Raspberry Pi that I thought I'd blown up with noobs and it works. So the whole problem was the micro SD card had failed. 
between using it one day without SunFounder kit and then powering it up the next day after connecting it to the SunFounder, coincidentally. Uh, a solid state memory device that's rated for millions of writes failed catastrophically. I haven't figured out what's wrong. Anything that I plug this micro SD into, um, of course, I don't plug it directly into the laptop. I use a USB hub, but it just won't recognize it as a memory card at all. Um, it, it just, it won't go. So I downloaded the latest noobs and wrote it to a new micro SD card. And I need to install the whole SunFounder thing again from scratch. I got it started. Uh, but I messed up the password. Um, I typed it in wrong and now it won't let me do uh, super user to install the software. So I got to do it again. Um, the noobs is a different install. The SunFounder software is different uh, on this version. I downloaded the new manual. Um, everything looks different, but it, it's kind of looks it it looks different in the details, but it's kind of kind of the same in uh, in uh, general. So I'm going to be continuing that next week. Uh, the off-grid solar, um, I removed some of the metal hardware from my crate. And I'm looking for a, a better and more water-resistant cover. Um, I'm going to bolt the inverter to the back so I don't need a shelf. I was thinking I needed a shelf. And I test fit the batteries into the bottom of the crate. It, it fits fine. I don't know if I'm going to have trouble with the inverter because it's now mounted vertically instead of horizontally. So it might have some heating issues. And it's not bolted to the ATV trailer frame or the tires or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, the ESP32 with the distance sensor and Bluetooth is working fine. Um, I, I, I guess I kind of split it up. So instead of trying to make uh, the distance sensor work with a, an Arduino that's seven feet away from it, I can't make that work. So I've I put it into the same package and then I'm going to be trying to build a Bluetooth repeater. Um, if I put my phone on top of the tank, uh, the readings um, read fine. So I change the software so that it just gives me a stable reading if it's within if the minimum and maximum are within 30 millimeters. And if you're connected with uh, the, the programming software, the Arduino programming software, um, it will give you stable readings and uh, all 10 readings with the min and the max and all that kind of stuff. I am still looking for what to use for a waterproof enclosure. Um, so it's easy to mount. And I collected some of the pictures and videos from uh, last week's script that I wrote on all of the stuff that I learned making this thing. Uh, but the videos and the pictures hadn't worked out. I haven't got a, a voiceover done yet. Um, so that was last week, uh, this coming week, um, is a little bit less. I'm going to finish loading the sun founder software for the raspberry Pi, and hopefully test out the new board from sun founder and leave feedback for them since they, they sent me new parts when the, it was totally my problem on the Pi. Although it, in my defense, it was a really strange problem. Um, I want to finish my uh, mobile battery powered inverter for the off-grid solar. Um, find a water resistant enclosure with mounting points for my uh, level sensor and then edit and post some video. Uh, blocks, it's fall time, not summertime. Uh, there is still other stuff to do, not quite as much other stuff to do. And that's it for me. Wow, that's inc that's impressive. Uh, I got I wrote I'm starting to write down my questions because there's so many things you're talking about. Uh, okay, uh, so for me, I'm going to give myself a six because I did get to the I got the files, and I'm looking at them, working on it. The team is a twelve. <laughs> I, I mean, you're really making progress, and all of it really goes together you know that this the distance sensor for fluid versus a distance center for the lrw it all uh, feeds into each other and the process improvement um i uh, actually my my process improvement at, at this point is uh, let's keep just keep doing what we're doing because uh, uh, it seems like there's some progress 
uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's that's it for me, and I've got crosstalk for online. Okay, uh, I am gonna give myself a ten because I got six points done. Only three of them were planned, but six I got six points done. And uh, I'm going to go with a seven for the team because you're making a, a progress as well uh, because uh, you didn't have to redo all that uh, stuff with the financials for the, for the uh, charitable uh, status. And I don't have a process improvement. I think, I think uh, continuing what we're doing is, is probably the way we should, we should do it. And I guess we're ready for crosstalk. Do you want to record any of it? Um, yeah, at least for starters. Sure. So uh, uh, I, I think I, I suspect the answer to this, but why not put the SD directly into the laptop? Because I always do that. Um, well, since I suspect that it's screwed, I don't want to blow the USB port on my laptop. Ah, I thought you were... I, yeah, go I ahead. Just, I, just, I just plugged it into a uh, cheap $5 hub. Right, that's right. An external power supply. And I don't actually know that that wouldn't kill my USB port, but I hope that it wouldn't kill my USB port. Right. Okay. Um, I was thinking that, you know, it, it, it was the SD card you were protecting, but it's not. It's the USB port. Yes. Okay. Uh, what kind... Oh yeah, again, your project for the fluid level, what kind of tank is that? It's actually a septic tank. Yeah, right. So you only need that every five years. <laughs> oh, no, no, this is not a septic tank. I'll call it a holding tank. Ah, uh, okay. I'm too close to the lake to uh, to make it so that uh, it's a regular septic tank where you pump the gray water out. Right, right, right. So... Um, it needs do you have frequent. A tank or do you have a septic tank? Pardon me. Do you have I, a holding tank or a septic? Tank? No, I have a septic tank. So uh, it's it was eight years, <laughs> and uh, okay. I didn't understand. <laughs> I thought they they you know either they worked or they didn't. I didn't understand that. Eventually they fill up, and you need to have them pumped. Yeah. So my son kept bugging me to, because I was worried about it, but I did, I was afraid to have someone over because I heard of stories where it cost a lot. But it turned out the guy came and uh, he said it's 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 time to pump it, but it's it's fine, it's working fine. And he discovered, probably was put in 40, 40 years ago, and uh, or fifty, and he discovered that the pipe from the plumbing in the house to the septic was never connected properly. Oh dear! <laughs> but it. It, it was, you know, gradually getting there. I think it was not connected over another tank or something. I don't know. Okay. But anyways, he so he fixed that for free. It's, this island is like everybody charges less than they say they will. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, anyway, so anyway. The, uh, the, the holding tank has a nine-foot neck, and then you have the four-foot of tank. So. Right. Um, and what's the like frequency you have to do something about it? You have to pump it or um, whatever. It is sixteen hundred gallons, and we we pumped it four times this year. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. That makes that makes sense, and that's that's a kind of the um, situation with my water that uh, I've never run out. My well has never failed, and I also collect rainwater. Uh, but uh, uh, the Things like the uh, pump, uh, the pump quitting because a wire broke in it mm -hmm. happened, and um, I'm not keen on climbing up on the on the tank, and my kids aren't don't want me climbing up on the tank to look into it. Mm -hmm. So uh, that that thing is you know very uh, helpful. Basically, you know, it's a warning if the the water's down. Oh uh, yeah, the level. Um I mean, depending on how, how tall your tank is, level should work just fine. Yeah, so what what's the range of it? Uh, in the dark, which, um, do you have a dark tank or a, a white tank? It's dark. Okay, uh, so you should get four meters out of it. Oh, four so meters, yeah, that'll do. Like 13 feet. Yep, that'll do. So, 
Uh, my my tank, uh, because of the neck, I have it like six feet down the neck, and so I have right. like three feet of uh, or two feet in the neck, uh, plus the plus the tank itself. So I got pretty good resolution on it. Anyway, yeah, cool. um, it is, the Bluetooth works. Um, it, I, I used I can't remember signal. No, I can't remember. It's in it's in the it's in the stand up. It's just a it's just yeah. an app that you normally use for texting back and forth that allows yeah. you to do uh, more than one old phone on the same, same yeah. topic. Anyway, uh, what else would cool. you like to talk about? Uh, let's see. The, um, the Linux thing I, uh, I was on, um, I, you know, if anybody's interested, I, 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 so I learned Linux in the 90s at uh, this guy in Silicon Valley who was like, uh, he's, he's hosted people like Richard Stallman at his house. So he's, he's like a Linux insider. Mm -hmm. So I learned he had a, a, week, a barbecue every two weeks in Silicon Valley. So I went down to that maybe three to six times. And that's how I got started with Linux. And they're, the people who come to it are, are from Oracle and just from the area and from like the early days of computing. I just, uh, one guy uh, had been to Gabriola. And so he went, he, after the meeting, one guy, he's in Santa Cruz where they had big fires recently, which is in uh, south of, uh, uh, so Silicon, there's Silicon Valley and then if you go over the mountains to the coast, there's Santa Cruz, which is like a beachside surfing place. So he he uh, wanted to chat. Mm -hmm. And it turns out, a yeah, really interesting story. Guy, uh, this guy, uh, you know, I, uh, I was asking what, what he did for a living. Yeah, he's like my age. And he said he... Uh, he has a work uh, clothing store in Santa Cruz. And he said, but I'm, I'm really proud that I, I wrote all the software for our, our system. And I said, when did you write the software for your, your clothing store? He said, 1976. <laughs> so he wrote it on. Oh, said, <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's been maintaining it, so. <laughs> He he wrote it on. I couldn't quite get the name. It was it's an eighty eighty. It was the second. The Altair was the first home computer, and it was the second one. Hmm. So that was kind of interesting. And the people there who go to this barbecue says they put it virtual for the first time. And the people who go to it are uh, uh, really really smart and <laughs> interesting. They used to I used to take my laptop down. And somebody from Oracle or one of those other companies would take it. And then I, I had to kind of drag it away from them so I could go home after four or five hours. Because <laughs> they would be saying, oh, you know, this this would really help them. And let's do this. <laughs> so you didn't recognize the computer once you got it home? I, no, no. I, they explained everything. and I didn't really need to know. But they just improved it in different ways. Uh, but you know they were uh, they're really smart, <laughs> and so the uh, actual thread, which is called it's there's a site called Linux Mafia, and this is the the gathering that he calls Cabal, Cabal. Uh, and like yeah, so he has this barbecue every two weeks, and he's had it until March, and he was in March. He um, he was about to have it that weekend, the weekend of March the nineteenth, and suddenly, and the thread is is rigidly, uh, tightly um, moderated. He kicks people out who go off topic or are disruptive, and so for the twenty uh, or twenty or more years it's been there, that it's always fantastic on great discussion about tech stuff. But uh, and about open source. Uh, but and he, it's always just about Linux and systems and 
uh, open source things, except March 19th, he started writing about COVID. And I mean, it literally, or uh, rather <laughs> figuratively scared the hell out of me that night because he said what was happening in New York. He, 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 he got some urgent messages from people he trusted in New York. So he canceled his uh, barbecue that weekend. And uh, there's been a lot about COVID. His wife is a, a biochemist in the medical field or something like that. I don't know what actually her, her field is, but it's, um, it's detailed and terrifying to read, <laughs> to read the thread now. Uh, she was just talking about some of the, the worst uh, ill effects of COVID, you know, the uh, people who, who've who had it. Is it back to a tech? Uh, uh, it's it's both tech now. So the no. tech came back, but now, but there's still plenty of COVID mm -hmm. on it. Uh, and it's, uh, like I said, it's uh, sobering. Well, when, I, when I get the video posted, maybe you want to... Uh comment on the video and just put a link to uh, link to the Linux mafia. Yeah. So the, the thread is uh, like an invitation and I, um, I, yeah. So uh, if you're interested, uh, I'll, I'll tell the, uh, the sysop. Oh, so he has to invite you. Yeah. Yeah. That's like an invitation, but the Linux mafia, I'll, I'll send that. I'll send the uh, the thing to that. I don't know if it, what it has compared to the thread, and, and there may be an opportunity there to get on the thread too. So okay. I'll check it out. Uh, the, my our local uh, Linux uh, founder of our local Linux group has uh, asked me to to go on it, and uh, yeah, yeah. So I'll I'll pass it on. Okay. Yeah. And just for your information, the the Pi version four. Uh -huh. to be a favored uh, media server now. It does 4K. Oh, streaming oh, yeah, right, right. Stuff. Yeah. So, um, it looks like there is a uh, quite quite a bit of support for it. Uh, I'm not sure if ever if all the bugs are worked out yet, but it um, looking at the noobs um, install, it yeah. specifically mentions the the Pi four. So, right, right. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's uh, so. That's uh, that's good news, actually, because uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have your uh, your server hanging off the back of your monitor. Yeah, um, <laughs> it, it's no longer a single tasking device. It, it actually does stuff around your house as well. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, did you read the pie hole article in Make? Uh, I did read, and I've got it bookmarked. And I now that I have an an extra. Pi three, that I thought I had blown up one. Now I have an extra one, so maybe I'll I'll get the pie hole. Uh, yeah, they said the pie hole works on the five dollar pie, uh, or probably ten dollar Canadian. Uh, uh, nano, right? Na uh, nano or zero or whatever it is. Yeah, I nano. Suppose, yeah. yeah. Um, I think the it's an Arduino Nano. I think it's a Pi zero. So. Pi zero. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I haven't done it, but a guy I know who's not too technical, he swears by because he does a lot of streaming hmm. and he gets a lot of pop-ups. Well, I'm going to try it at the lake because I have a, would you believe what the data cap, the highest data cap I can get is 30 gig. And normally it takes us less than a week. Wow. And I'm assuming that a whole bunch of that is ads because we don't really stream much video. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, that would. I'm really interested in hearing about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's it for me. Anything else? No, not nothing else that I want to talk about. Except that I, I, it seems like I got some stuff done, but it also seems like I didn't get as much stuff as I wanted done. So, um, it that's always, I guess, the case. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I, I forgot what I was going to comment about that. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, the, the stuff you're talking about, I, I had more things too, but I, I can't remember them. And I, I said I'd get off this meeting and help move an aquarium, a 90-gallon uh, aquarium from the car 
although I'm not going to lift it. <laughs> okay. But I have I have a, a kind of a little dolly, or I may suggest. Ah, it's late, so we can't rent from the hardware store nearby. So we may, uh, I don't know, put logs under it, <laughs> Egyptian style. <laughs> Carry the log to the front. Mm -hmm. well, it works. <laughs> don't, don't, don't mess with it. it works. <laughs> I, I would use fence posts because they're a little smoother. But yeah. <laughs> Are we ready to stop recording then? Uh, I, I'm ready. Okay, here we go.